Mr. IQ, the show that has given away more than a million silver dollars. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We greet you once again from New York City and the 58th Street Theater. My assistants are stationed throughout the audience with portable microphones to enable members of the theater audience to remain in their seats while answering the questions I ask from the stage. And now may I present my assistants. In the left balcony is George Ansbro. Thank you, Doctor. On my left downstairs is Dirk Frederick. Thank you, Doctor. In the right balcony is Art Fleming. Thank you, Doctor. And on my right downstairs is Ed Michael. Thank you, Doctor. And so do our first contestant on tonight's program from New York City, George Ansbro, in the left balcony. I have a lady in the balcony, Doctor. Eighteen silver dollars to that lady for the correct answer to this question. If you live next door to the famous fictional character, Mrs. Wiggs, where would you live? Mrs. Wiggs? Yes. Um... Five seconds, please. Mrs. Wiggs. Yes. No prompting. Next to a person who makes wigs. Oh, <laughs> thanks for trying. Uh, um, in a rabbit patch, a cabbage patch. In a cabbage patch or a rabbit's hatch? That's close enough. Yes, yes in a briar patch or cabbage patch. Give that lady 18 silver dollars. Congratulations to you as the first winner on tonight's program. Now let's go to Dirk Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. Sixteen silver dollars for this one. The three leading cities in Ohio all begin with the letter C. Give me the names of those three leading cities. Uh, Ohio, did you say, Doctor? Yes, Ohio. Cleveland. Cleveland. Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And, uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati. One more. Five seconds, please. Begins with a C. Chic no, it's uh, Illinois, not Chicago. I'm... Cleveland, Cincinnati. Oh. Columbus? G Columbus! Very good. That's 14 silver dollars to that lady. Good for you. Just under the wire. You know your Ohio cities. Now let's go to Art Fleming in the right balcony. I have a gentleman, Doctor. 14 silver dollars for this one. Well, you know short order cooks have a language all their own. Now what food would have been ordered if you heard these words? BT down, hold the mayo. <laughs> now, what, what food would that be? Was that uh, P, T down? No, that's B. B as in boy. B, T down. Hold the mail. Uh, bacon and yes. tomato. Yes. Uh, hold the mayonnaise. Hold the mayonnaise. Bacon and tomato on toast. Hold the mayonnaise. That's 14 silver dollars to that gentleman. Good for you, sir. Now, add Michael on my right downstairs. I have a young lady, Doctor. Fourteen silver dollars for this one. You're looking at a photograph of Clark Gable and Vivian Lee in a scene from one of Hollywood's greatest motion pictures. What is the name of that picture? Five seconds for fourteen silver dollars. A very, very wonderful picture, too. No prompting. Make love to me. <laughs> Make love to me. Thanks for trying. But I think you'd find that gone with the wind. But a year's supply of long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick to that lady. And now let's go to George Ansbro in the left balcony. I have a lady in the balcony, Doctor. Eleven silver dollars for this one. Harry told his roommate that he was going to propose to his girl. When he came home, his roommate asked him what she had said. Here's Harry's reply. And it's the title of this song. What is it? Can you tell me the title? What Harry's girl said to him. Five seconds, please. I'm awfully sorry. I think you'd find the title was She Didn't Say Yes. But a year's supply of that sensational new formula, Hazel Bishop lipstick. And let's go now to Dirk Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a gentleman, Doctor. I'll give that gentleman 17 silver dollars for the correct answer to this question. A mechanical coin-operated phonograph, that is a jukebox, had 20 selections on it. A man played the selection fourth from the bottom. What was the number of the tune he selected? Fourth from the bottom. The 16th one. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir. Close, but I think you'd find it. The 17th one. But a year's supply of long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick for the lady in your life. And thanks for trying. Now let's go to the right balcony in Art Fleming. I have a lady in the balcony, Doctor. Twelve silver dollars for this one. Texas is the largest state in the Union. Now tell me, how many more senators Texas has than Rhode Island, which is the smallest state in the Union? The same. The same, exactly. Every state has the same number, too. Give that lady twelve silver dollars. And now let's go to Ed Michael on my right downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. 
I'll pay you 13 silver dollars for this one. Suppose you raise avocados for a living. Would you be raising, would you call raising avocados a vocation or would you call it an avocation? Vocation. It would be a vocation if you do it for a living. An avocation is merely a sideline or a hobby. That is 13 silver dollars to that lady. And now it's George Andro in the left alley. I have a gentleman, Doctor. As you can see, my assistant has four lettered blocks which spell the word reef, R-E-E-F. Now, in five seconds, I want you to move just one block and make another word. Eleven silver dollars if you can do it. Oh, this is a word that the ladies love. It's a word that all good Americans love, too. All right, he changed it. He made F-R-E-E, free. Is that right? That's right, Doctor. Give that gentleman 11 silver dollars. And tonight, downstairs. I have a gentleman, Doctor. I have 13 silver dollars for the correct answer to this question, sir. Traditionally, what color for clothes do mothers usually select for boy babies and what color for girl babies? Pink and blue. All right, uh, which is which, though? The blue is for the... Boys and pink for the girls. The blue for the boys and the pink for the girls. That's 13 silver dollars to that gentleman. And now it's Art Fleming in the right balcony. I have a young lady in the balcony, Doctor. If you give me the title of this hit parade song, I'll give you 11 silver dollars. Listen. A jury may find her guilty. I get so lonely. What did you say? I get so lonely. I get so lonely. Oh. Oh, wanted. Oh, wanted. Yes. Is that what you said? Wanted? Yes. yes. recorded by Perry Como. That's 11 silver dollars to that lady. Ed Michael now on my right downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. 27 silver dollars to that lady for this one. In 1895, Elizabeth Merriweather Gilmer wrote her first newspaper column. It became one of the most widely read of all syndicated columns. I'll give you 27 silver dollars if you can tell me Elizabeth Merriweather Gilmer's famous pen name. I'll take Dorothy Dix, but I'm sure. You'll also take 27 silver dollars. Good for you. <laughs> Dorothy Dix is absolutely correct. And now let's go to George Ansborough on the left balcony. I have a gentleman, Doctor. For tonight's program, the winning biographical portrait of a famous personality was sent in by Mrs. Beatrice K. Burns of 1110 24th Street, North Bergen in New Jersey. For using her information, the Hazel Bishop long-lasting lipstick is sending to Mrs. Burns 75 silver dollars. Now, if you identify the personality I'm describing after the first clue is given, I'll give you 75 silver dollars. Of course, the longer it takes you to identify him, the less your reward. Are you ready for your first clue? Ready, Doctor. I think I'll just paint the clue for you each time tonight. Now, your first clue pays 75 silver dollars, and here it is. For 75 silver dollars, tell me. He was born in Brooklyn, September the 26th, 1898. He became one of America's greatest composers. All right, five seconds, sir. 17 silver dollars, you have his eye. George Gershwin. George Gershwin, give that gentleman 75 silver dollars. Congratulations to you. Congratulations, sir. That is very... I have a soldier, doctor. I'll give that soldier 17 silver dollars for the correct answer. Washington is the most northwesterly state in the Union. Which is the most northeasterly state? Maine. Maine, 17 silver dollars to that soldier. There's a boy that knows his United States. Good for you, sir. Now let's go to Art Fleming in the right balcony. I have a gentleman, doctor. Many sports use nets. Tennis, for example. Four silver dollars for each additional one you can name and 29 silver dollars if you get as many as five. All right? Volleyball. Volleyball? That's one. Five seconds between names, please. All right? Uh. Let's have lacrosse. A lacrosse, good. Yes, sir. There's ten. There's uh, eight silver dollars for you. Let's get another one. Five seconds. Time's almost up. Can't you think of another one? Soccer. Soccer. All right, I'll accept that. Good. One more. That all you can get? 
That's all. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. You've got 12 silver dollars. I think you'd find the others were badminton, ice hockey or field hockey, basketball, uses a net, of course, and ping pong, and, of course, fishing, which we would hardly ever think of. But that's three of them, so it's 12 silver dollars to that gentleman. Congratulations. Thank you. Now let's go to Ed Michael on my right downstairs. I have a young gentleman, Doctor. 19 silver dollars for this one. What is the correct name of the famous police force of Canada? By the way, what is your name, sir? John Marmalstein. John, all right, John. What is the correct name now? I must have the exact title of the famous police force of Canada. Northwest Mounties. The Northwest Mounties? Oh, that's pretty close. But I'm sorry, sir, I think you'd find that the Royal Canadian Mounted Police is the exact or correct name. But you got pretty close on that, so let's give that young gentleman nine silver dollars. <laughs> and now let's go to George Ansbro on the left balcony. I have a soldier, doctor. Eighteen silver dollars for this one to test your powers of concentration. Listen closely as I cannot repeat it. Please say this sentence backwards. Day after day, he doesn't work, does he? All right. He work after day. Oh, I'm sorry. Doesn't off. he? <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, soldier. That's a good try, but I think you'd find it. He does work, doesn't he, day after day. But for the lady in your life, a year's supply of sensational, long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick. And thanks for trying, soldier. Now, Dirk Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a gentleman, doctor. I have 14 silver dollars for an arithmetickler. Mr. Brown owned a half interest in a flower shop. He sold half of his interest for $1,000. Now, based on this sale, what was the entire shop worth? 1500 1500 Oh, I'm awful sorry, sir. What did you say? 4,000. 4,000, yes. If he sold half of his half for 1,000, then the entire worth would be 4,000. You got it just under the wire. That is 14 silver dollars to that gentleman. <laughs> and now to our cunning in the right balcony. I have a gentleman, doctor. Now we come to the yes or no portion of our show. Please answer either yes or no to each of these three statements. For the correct answer to each statement, I'll give you 10 silver dollars. But if you answer all three of the statements correctly, I'll pay you in addition 100 silver dollars. Now, here are the three statements. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The first one, answer yes or no. The French flag with its colors reversed is the emblem of the International Red Cross. Yes or no? No, sir. No, it is not because the Swiss flag is the one that has its colors reversed to make the emblem of the International Red Cross. Now, here's the second one. Texas was the first state to have a woman governor. Yes or no? No, sir. No, Texas was not the first state to have a woman governor because Wyoming was the first state with a woman governor. Now, sir, you have two of them answered absolutely correctly. If you answer this third one, it's 130 silver dollars, so hang on. And be very careful. The Milky Way is a band of stars that encircles the heavens. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, it is. That's 130 silver dollars to that gentleman. Congratulations to you, sir. That's $130 that man walks off with tonight. Now let's go to Ed Michael on my right downstairs. I have a soldier, doctor. All right, sir, nine silver dollars for this one. On a sundial, what takes the place of the hour hand on a clock? Well, it's a blade that the sun re uh, shines against. The, the blade? The oh, no, the shadow of the sun actually <laughs> is what it is. The, the shadow is the, is the thing that takes the place. Give that soldier nine silver dollars. <laughs> People are really taking away the silver dollars tonight. Now let's go to George Ansbro on the left balcony. I have a gentleman, doctor. President Eisenhower's official cabinet is made up of ten people. I'm going to name five. Tell me which cabinet post is associated with each name. Five silver dollars for each name and 50 silver dollars if you can get all five correctly. 
The first one is John Foster Dulles. What, what cabin? Post. All right, sir? Could, could you hear me all right? Would you repeat the question? Uh, John Foster Dulles. What cabin at Post, please, sir? Well, let's try the second one. How about Arthur E. Summerfield? What cabin at Post does he have? Five seconds, no prompting, please. Well, you want to try the third one? George M. Humphrey. What cabin at Post does he hold? I don't know. Well, how about Charles E. Wilson? All right, your last one is James P. Mitchell. I don't know. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, sir. I think you'd find that Mr. Dulles is... We must have a Democrat in the group here. We, uh, we find that Mr. Dulles is Secretary of State, Mr. Summerfield is Postmaster General, Mr. Humphrey is uh, the Treasury, and Mr. Wilson is Secretary of Defense, and Mr. Mitchell is Secretary of Labor. But for the lady in your life, a year's supply of sensational new formula Hazel Bishop lipstick, and thanks for appearing on our microphone now to Dirk Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. Is the notorious Devil's Island off the coast of North Africa, South America, or South France? Sixteen silver dollars. Oh, uh, North Africa. It is off the coast of North Africa. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, lady. I think you'd find it South America. Devil's Island has been the locale of many famous novels and motion pictures, and it's off of South America. But a year's supply of sensational new formula Hazel Bishop lipstick and thanks for trying our art climbing in the right balcony. I have a lady in the balcony, Doc. Eighteen silver dollars for this one. I've taken two familiar proverbs and I've scrambled them together. I want you to untangle them and give them in the form that they are usually heard. I'll give you eighteen silver dollars if you can do it. All right, here they are scrambled. Silence, look, leap, golden is before you. Now, what are those two Scrambled uh, up from. is golden. Yes. And uh, leap before you look. Well, leap before you look. <laughs> I don't think that would be a very good uh, proverb, but I'll accept it. It's look before you leap. Uh, wouldn't you rather amend it to that? Look before you leap and silence is golden. Give that lady 18 silver dollars. <laughs> now let's go to Ed Michael on my right downstairs. I have a gentleman, Doctor. Nine silver dollars for this one. If you were given that rare pleasure of washing dishes, should you use hot or cold water on a bowl that had flour in it in order to do the job more easily? All right, sir. What do you say? Uh, let's see. Five seconds. I'd use... Uh... Uh, cold water. You'd use cold water, yes, because the hot water makes it sticky and has a tendency to form a paste from the flour. Give that gentleman the payoff of nine silver dollars. Congratulations. There's a man who must have been helping his wife in the kitchen. Congratulations to you, sir. And now to Bob Shepard on my love. Our friends are going to take advantage of that wonderful offer. Now let's go to George Ansborough with more questions in the left balcony. I have a lady in the balcony, doctor. Eleven silver dollars for this one. When a Scotsman talks about the bonny bray of Scotland, is he referring to the beautiful hills, to the numerous lakes, or to the green of the fields? The green of the fields. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I think you'd find it the beautiful hills. But a year's supply of long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick to that lady. And I'll go to Dirk Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. As you can see, written on the blackboard is... T-O-L-I-V-E. In five seconds time, I want you to take those letters and rearrange them so that you have the name of a flower. 27 silver dollars if you can do it. The name of a flower using those letters. V-I-O-L-E-T. 27 silver dollars to that lady. She knows her flowers and she got it fast. Good for you. Now, Art Fleming in the right balcony. I have a gentleman, Doctor. Nineteen silver dollars, and this one is tricky. I'm warning you as a good friend to think a second before answering. And I'll give you nineteen silver dollars, sir, to tell me one thing that happened on April 31st, 1953. There is no April 31st. Give that gentleman nineteen silver dollars. <laughs> All right, now let's go to Ed Michael on my right downstairs. I have a lady, Doctor. 
35 silver dollars for this one. Once more, we come to the thought twister, which I'll say one time and one time only. If you can repeat it after me exactly as I say it, I'll give you 35 silver dollars. Are you ready? Yes, I am, Doctor. All right, listen closely. He's still my Bill, said Jill to Lil. He's still my Bill, Jill, to her, said Lil. All right. He's still my Bill, said Lil to Jill. He's still my Bill. Lil to her, said Jill. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. You got the formula exactly right, but you got the names backward. It is, he still my bill said Jill to Lil, and you said Lil to Jill. Oh, that's one question, though, that you have to get exactly right. A year's supply of long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick and a good hand for a very good try. She almost got it. And now let's go to George Andrew on the left balcony. I have a lady on the balcony, Doctor. Nine silver dollars for this one. What happened to Jack? after he and Jill reached the top of the hill. They fell down. <laughs> they fell down. Uh, they did both down of them? The hill? Beg pardon? Yes. Fell down, and what happened to Jack then? He broke his skull. He, he broke his crack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. You remember your nursery rhyme excellently. Give that lady nine silver dollars. Congratulations to you. Now let's go to Dick Fredericks on my left downstairs. I have a gentleman, doctor. Eleven silver dollars for this one. When you hear a violin, do the high notes come when the violinist has his fingers near the bridge or when his fingers are at the end of the instrument? Near the bridge. When they are near the bridge, yes, because the string length is shortened, therefore, and makes the tone higher. Give that gentleman 11 silver dollars. Now let's go to Art Fleming in the right balcony. I have a gentleman, Doctor. Fourteen silver dollars for this one. You're looking at one of the most familiar and respected club emblems in the world. Fourteen silver dollars for the name of the club this emblem represents. Five seconds, please. No, the Rotary. The Rotary. The what, the what did you say? The Rotary. Rotary Club International. Give that gentleman fourteen silver dollars. And a wonderful organization Rotary is. And now, let's go to my right downstairs and Ed Michael. I have a gentleman, Doctor. Once more, we come to the famous quotation award. I'm going to give you, sir, a famous quotation. And if you can tell me the name of its author, I'll give you 800 silver dollars. I don't know how you'll carry them away, but you'll get them. And here's the quotation. Be it ever so humble... There's no place like home. Now, who wrote those famous and wonderful lines? Robert Louis Stevenson. What did you say? Robert Louis Stevenson. Oh, thanks for trying, sir. But I think you'd find the author was John Howard Payne. Therefore, next week's famous quotation award will be 900 silver dollars, and you get a year's supply for your lady fair of long-lasting Hazel Bishop lipstick. Thanks very much, sir, for trying. Well, our time is up. Dr. IQ, the show that has given away more than a million silver dollars. Welcome to my nightmare. Uh, there's some vinegar smell. Today. It was eaten up by his film collection. <laughs> it's right here. The big one was when I got a call about the Clio Awards. The next room. You guys have no concept. Yeah, come on in. Right. This is all part of a collection that I have never gotten to in about 15 years. And the owner of the Clear Awards was in a drug deal. They burnt down his townhouse. And there, folks, is films that I had just pulled out of sales films, commercials, regional films, spot advertisements, a great history of television that uh, I've never been able to get to. George, George, stop the machine. Stop the machine.
this film so old it just breaks up in your fingers. Can't you patch it together again? Not a chance. Cellular's only good for 20 years or so, and then it gets so brilliant you can't hardly touch it. You mean... You mean that we can't even see it? Now that we have it? There's just nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. Never had the world known a more wonderful way of recording knowledge. But now it was realized that it wasn't permanent, that half a century of history was about to decay out of existence. <laughs>